Okay, session 15 of Tomb of Annihilation. <laughs> and uh, last time, if you recall, uh, you finally uh, defeated the uh, clay gladiators at uh, Shagma, Shagma Biss's temple. And then from there, you went over and successfully completed uh, Kubazan Shrine Challenge. And then back on the player map, uh, the two temples with the V are the two that you have completed. The two S's on the map are um, other shrines that you know about. Um, And Angra, I'm going to bring you into the story here in just a moment. Yeah. Okay, uh, so as you left the uh, Frog Temple, uh, you found another one of these stone cubes. Uh, that have a ruin of the uh, god whose shrine that you were in and you know they're like three inch square stone cubes um, you have no idea what their purpose is and as you are leaving uh, the temple you can hear someone screaming for help. And... Sound like it went from the uh, area of our camp. Yeah. No, it's uh, actually coming from uh, more the north of you. But, you know, you can hear uh, the faint sound of uh, sword clashing and, you know, a lot of... Um, screaming and someone screaming help me guys should we go help I think so we, we should go help all right then let's go help okay and Unger Max uh, you um, are just coming into the city um, like we discussed the other day uh, you like everyone else is uh, the sole surviving member of an expedition to Chult And uh, as you're actually coming down into the city, past the guard towers and so forth, um, uh, you can hear uh, as well someone calling for help. Uh, go and see who's calling for help. Okay, and right in front of you, uh, you see uh, like this raised roadway that uh, appears to be traveling down the uh, same direction as the uh, call from help. <laughs> I'll try to take the shortest path possible to there. Yeah, and um, Cholt has been, uh, Omo has been abandoned for quite some time, and the jungle has reclaimed part of it, as you can see from the map, and you know, there's this giant rift with uh, the river flowing in 
into the lava pit creating this gigantic uh, amount of steam but you get on top of this roadway and you know it's it's not as heavily covered with vegetation as everything else and so as everyone is making their way toward the um, toward the cry from help uh, give me just a second I got a new map coming at you on there Uh, uh, is there supposed to be like a combat map or something? Uh, sorry, I'm putting to send it. Put everyone's tokens on it. <laughs> well, I mean, son, for the amount of time that, that I've DM'd for us, you would figure I'd know what he's doing. <laughs> Unger Max needs on. The combat tracker. Holy cow, there's a lot of crap on my combat tracker. <laughs> Okay, new map coming at you guys, and actually you've already got it. Um, uh, you're coming in, uh, as you get closer to the sounds, um, everyone's seeing that this is an abandoned campsite. Um, you can see torn backpacks and there's rotted gear littering the ground around uh, this site and so forth. Um, uh, at the center of the camp you can see a scrap of uh, dirty yellow cloth hanging from a crude flagpole. And you can see uh, the remains of uh, what looks like it's a fireplace. And you are aware of someone approaching approaching from the south, which would be Unger Max. And to the northwest, uh, you see these. You see six of the uh, snake-headed uh, guys, as well as uh, three of the pure, these pure-blooded, um, they look almost human, but, you know, uh, something's not quite right about them. And in the northwestern corner of the map, uh, you can see Hemo, and he is being drugged into the woods by two of them. And just to 
refresh your memory, Hemo, you had left in the first shrine, unconscious, surrounded by clay gar or the clay gladiators. When you went back to the shrine uh, the second time, um, he was nowhere near, nowhere to be found. But you can tell that Hemo is uh, fairly battered and bruised and is being hauled off into the jungle. Do you all wish to go help? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> you guys want to check out one of the other shrines? <laughs> Uh, Malik, or Hemo, yells out, Malik, help, help me! me. <laughs> uh, and you see, um, the Yuntai start advancing out from underneath their cover and so forth. Then, like I said, you also see Unger Max uh, approaching from the south. And would everyone like to uh, roll for initiative? We just need Oryx and Mr. Happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Oryx isn't with you yet. He'll be able to go adventuring with you tomorrow. And Mr. Happy rolled a whopping six. And let's see. That's 18 and 8. as well. Okay. Kellen, uh, you see them uh, dragging off uh, Hemo. And you see others approaching. And also you see this uh, large fighter approaching from the south. Roger that, roger that. These squares are five feet, correct? Uh, yes, sir, they are, and I lock tokens. I'm going to move up here. Wait so I can get a range on something after I'm there.
Much range on a short bow again. Eighty-three twenty. That shot would be a disadvantage, would it not? I will cast Firebolt on this Yanti down here. And I hit. There we go. Angra, you have uh, one approaching from the southwest, and you also see this group of adventurers approaching from the east. Because oh. I don't completely know them yet. Um... Actually, set it between squares right now. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, there you go. Um, can't really do a whole lot else at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be it for me. Um, uh, do you want to ready an action in case you're attacked? Um. gonna move around eight eight and eighteen and hemo are gonna move further away coming down and moral just going to move up and we're going to do a dash OK. 
Okay, Helm Grayscale. I'm gonna move up pretty quick. And I'm gonna go ahead and cast uh Shield of Face on myself. Okay, guess I'll move up. And cast false life on itself. with happy um, I have a five for the strange fighter uh -oh. okay And he is He's just slowly advancing up. Number seven is coming around the wall. All right, Kellen. Kellen's going to move there, and he's going to cast another fireball. And he hits for another nine damage. Okay, 19 is gonna run up. Ten is going to run up and try and shoot a longbow at Ungramax. And the shot goes wide. No, sixteen's coming down and getting into the shrubbery. Gonna try a longbow attack at Angra again. And that one does hit. And welcome to the game, Angra. <laughs> <laughs> um 
Uh, you you feel the arrow hit you, and uh, naturally you're taking some damage from the arrow sticking out of you. But uh, you have reason to suspect that uh, you know you're not feeling so well. That you know this arrow could have been poisoned. Wonderful. And, sir, you just got hit, and it's your go. <laughs> well. I get there, then I will back on now remind me again how I come again. Okay, uh your character sheet actions tab, uh grab the dice of uh whatever one you want to roll and drop it on the token that you are attacking. Uh, okay. That's a good hit. And then you just drag the damage. Very good hit. Younger for future reference. Mm -hmm. You're using an extended weapon, which means yeah. you can attack from 10 feet away. Yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> You're all good, man. Just giving you, giving you some advice. Oh, thank you. And you do have an extra attack if you wish to take it. Yes, I will. And then when you're done with your turn, if you would just hit the little down arrow on the combat tracker. Alright, number three is moving up. Yeah, real quick, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt. Double check to make sure that that damage is marking onto the on T. I see the, I see I see the, the hit. hit. I was just making sure that it actually affected them. It went to number... I think it was 16. 16. Yeah, okay, yeah, it looked yeah, like it is. Well, let's see. Well, 16 on the combat tracker. That was the first damage. Yeah, because I, I would have to highlight it over the character, right? Uh, yeah, it looks like it did not okay. apply to 16, so there we go. What you can you can do instead, um, if you don't want to drag things over to them, you can control click their uh, icon, and you'll actually have them physically targeted, and then you okay. can just roll the dice themselves. Gotcha, okay. Okay, number three. Yep, she moved up. Okay, eight and eighteen and Hemo uh, disappear into the brush out of sight. And You can hear Hemo just, uh, you know, he's cussing you out. You all, you fuckers, you have done it to me once again. <laughs> and he 
she's gonna come around the wall and he is gonna target Moral. And he shoots a, an arrow at him and misses. And Moral's going to try a guiding boat back at him. And it does not connect. Eighteen is coming around the fireplace and Helm, you are up, sir. I will double me and I'm going to cast uh, your weapon uh, over by the uh, uh, Yuan-Ti, 16. Okay. I'll go ahead and make a swing with it. Swing away. Oop, did I have did somebody else? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I found myself. You missed yourself oh, and hit the on yeah. <laughs> That's generally a good thing. Okay, I guess I'll move up. <laughs> and I'll chill touch a yarn tea. You both feel uncomfortable. He's going to continue, continue flying, flying towards, towards the strange new fighter. Okay. I'm going to attack him with my short bow. All right, I was a mess. Just making sure. I am done. Okay. Um... Number 19 is uh, staying put. Ten is gonna come 
down and try a long bow at Angra. Ooh, that would be another hit. Okay, Angra, you just got hit again. Wonderful feeling. Depends on where it hits you. Yeah. <laughs> Down just a little bit. Okay, and number two is going to come across. <laughs> okay, and he fires a uh, longbow at Malik and misses, and he takes a second attack and fires another arrow at Moral and does hit Moral and Moral takes some damage of which Moral is not too happy about and we're gonna try another guiding bolt and that is indeed a hit Have a third level guiding boat. And 18's just moving up some, and Helm, you're up. Oh, Helm. Helm. Yeah, yeah. Um. Take a swing, my spiritual weapon. A valiant effort. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess I'll move up. And... 
Shield touch. He's going to keep flying towards the new fighter guy. Can you dash while flying? <laughs> Not, Not sure, sure you, you could. could. <laughs> I can't kill Mr. Happy if he never gets down there. And that the one. Why you can't dash while flying. Did you say there was no reason? There's no reason why you can't. I mean, if you can do any other action while flying and moving, you know, then I would figure that the, the rules of movement would stick the same just based on your flight speed instead of your ground speed. I'll go with that. Uh, number 16 uh, has dropped his longbow and has a scimitar, and he takes a swing at... Ungra, and that one is a miss. Am I able to do a reaction at this point then? I guess, I guess that, that would that depend what the reaction is. Uh, yeah. Uh, the riposte. If they miss with a melee attack, I can use a reaction and expend one superiority die to make a melee weapon attack against it. Uh, if I yeah. hit, I, I add the die to the attack roll. Okay. Um. So then how would I add the superiority die to it? Would I just do the damage and then just do the die separate? Uh, yeah, we can do that. Okay. <laughs> well, Not that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> And you have this closet that has flew up beside you. Oh, the closet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure what to do with this, this creature. <laughs> <laughs> um, Neither is anyone else. And number seven's going to just approach. Okay, Kellen, you can see that the new guy has dropped one. Testing Firebolt on number ten. to fire a longbow 
at helm. And he follows that with a second arrow at helm, and helm dodges both of them. Number 10 is going to come around. And come up. And he is going to fire longbow. At Kellen. Which does hit. Ha ha ha. And we're going to try a second attack, which hits as well. I'm going to teach you to fire bolt my butt. You can kill me, that's alright. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. 16 sting. Put twenty three is coming down, and he's going to try a longbow at Angra, which does hit. I am just not missing anything. Why not happen? <laughs> Don't worry, I got crit like five times in the first session I played. <laughs> okay. Try swinging it here. Paying him back for that damage. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and three stain put. <clears throat> and two is going to the long boat moral. And the arrow sells past Malik, he missed so bad. <laughs> and another one at Moral, which misses. And we're going to try that Sacred Flame. And he just succeeded his saving throw. Hawker. And 
tomorrow's gonna come in some. And 18 staying put. Helm, you're up. Okay, let them have some fun. Move up here. I will use my bonus action for my spiritual weapon towards uh, uh, number I three. Swing twice at number two. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then yeah, I'm going to take a swing at number 23 with my spiritual weapon. You just <laughs> thought you were. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll move up. And chill touch. Uh, Mr. Happy will land on the fallen yarn tee and start uh, chowing down on it while it's still twitching. And number seven's gonna move down. And Kellen. Gonna move up. And fire his row. And misses. Hey, it says your head. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm used to mine. It always shows below. Yeah, I don't know why these things are so random anymore. It doesn't show head on mine. It's read above it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what we were talking, so. And do 13 points of damage with sneak attack. Okay. Yeah, nineteen staying put. Uh ten wants some payback, so he drops his longbow and has the scimitar. And he's going to take a swing at the helm and does connect. And we're going to try another one at the helm. Eighteen staying put, twenty-three. Is gonna take a five foot step while dropping his longbow. 
And he's just gonna... He's gonna take a swing at Unger Max, and it is a hit. User joined your channel. And oh. Unger Max, you are up, sir. Okay. Hey, Arliss. Hello, Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, sure can. Good morning. Hmm. Just give me a sec. I need to restart to the speak. Unger, I'm going to push up for you, brother. Channel. Yep, yep, yep. Um, um, what's your AC? Uh, it's 16. User joined your channel. Okay, okay. just making okay. sure you had your armor equipped. The 14 oh. was a, it seemed like a low, a low row to hit, but yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Okay. Pure blood number three starts to withdraw from the battlefield. And number two is going to use a longbow. And we'll see if Fantasy Grounds unpauses. <laughs> it froze right in the middle of the dice roll. <laughs> and we're going to. You gonna know what? what? I figured out what up Fortin hit. Go back, back up, up above Ungermax back. turn. Uh, your uh, Yan Chi Mason, Mason. Uh, looks uh, like look he was attacking back. himself. Ah, so let's see. Yes, he was. So, Angra gets back four points of damage. Okay, finally managed to get sound. <laughs> Did you guys start it earlier today? Yeah, uh, daylight uh, daylight saving time. time. So you're an hour late. No, we're an oh, hour early. Uh, no, he's an hour late, yeah. Wait. But yeah, we start uh, we started at normal time, time but, but compared to last week it's an hour earlier. It's already daylight savings? No, we spring for we spring forward into uh we well, yeah, daylight savings, but we spring forward in the spring, so we go an hour yeah. ahead. Yeah. Okay, number yeah, number two Our just missed tomorrow. And Moral is going back with a guiding bolt on number two. And it does hit. going to and 18 
it's gonna come down and he's gonna let loose a couple short bow attacks and they both miss moral helm Swing twice at number 10. And then I'm going to move up my spiritual weapon and take a swing at number 20. Okay, I guess I'll move up. And chill touch. The wick beyond T screams, Damn, your hands are cold. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Happy. Um, he's gonna attack number 23. One next to uh, Unger Max. With his, uh, poison bite. Can we make sure when, you know, Mr. Happy passes everything he's been eating that he does it away from the camp? <laughs> you know, because between the clay and the yon tea, it's not gonna smell too good. I might burn coming out with all this poison. Don't forget about the dirt. <laughs> and he saved his, uh, made his saving throw. Man, Don't worry, he has his, his own, like, spot for that. You haven't checked your backpack yet today. <laughs> good point, good point. Uh, and... Number seven's gonna come down. And he's going to trash a longbow on Malik. And Malik one shot goes by you and one does indeed hit you. And Arliss, uh, would you like to uh, load your character and we'll uh, bring you into combat? Okay, Kellen. Thanks, sir. sir. All right, oh, Kellen's yeah. gonna move up <laughs> another thirty feet. And then he is going to Malik Four and Malik Two. He's going to attack with a short bow. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. it's the first roll, 14. I forgot when it's down on the bar, it all shoots. Sorry, I'm having a bad day, man. <laughs> all right, subtract, subtract nine from that, please. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's dead either way. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it wasn't a wasted. At least you didn't have to do any extra work. Uh, absolutely. And he's going 
gonna move down and just gonna try a couple longbow attacks on Malik and misses both of them. Uh, 16 starts to pull back. Twenty three is gonna swing a scimitar at Mr. Happy. And the guy enjoyed it so much that he's gonna try another swing at Mr. Happy and miss. Oh. Mr. Happy being attacked, I'll have to attack him back. There's no reason yeah. to attack Mr. Happy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you can if you want. <laughs> no, no, no. That was a crit. <laughs> the dust. No one will harm Mr. Happy. <laughs> okay, Pure Blood 3 is uh, disappearing into the woods. So, Malik, in a uh, symbolic, symbolic gesture, did you keep one of the butt, butt cheeks feet. from that uh, clay golem that fell on the last one? Nope. Nope. I'm not a not potter. potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, think but about think it, about man. It. You could have molded it into a lifelike life -like clay statue of Mr. Happy, and it even would have had the same coloration. Okay, moral. Yep. It's time for another guiding bolt. And that does hit. At Moral's quite excited that he dropped one. And eighteen's gonna come down. And try longbow at helm. Okay, the second one didn't go. And Helm, you are up, sir. Which square is that, uh, is number 18 in? Is it yeah. like straddling? squares. Oh, sorry. There we go. I'll move right here. Oh, 
my bonus action to move my spiritual weapon. And let's wail on this guy, but. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast, cast False Life, life as third level, level on myself. myself. So we had yeah, 10 to that. Okay. Mr. Happy's Mr. gonna go for the Yawn Blood, Pure Blood 16. <laughs> cast cast Scare on it. Yeah, she was very afraid of Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy I just like looking and go boogie boogie. <laughs> okay. You got a six foot Yanti, yeah. you're completely afraid of a two foot, but a okay, uh, closet. <laughs> And tell him you miss an arrow, and another one comes flying by you. All right, I'm going to continue to move up a little bit, and then I'm going to attack with my short bow. Oh yeah, I had that one. <laughs> Lucky my string didn't break. Unger Max, you are up. And Pure Blood 16 did a dash away from Mr. Happy. Over underneath the on Eaton. And then try to swing at him.
Carol's going to do a dash and close the distance. Number 18. It's going to do a scimitar at helm, which does hit. And he's going to try and bite Helm. Um, quick question, DM. Yeah. Uh, the scimitar attacks, do they have poison on them? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, being a dwarf, uh, he's got innate... I'm a dwarf. Uh, Oh, okay, oh, you just got a dwarven picture. Sorry, right, never mind. <laughs> I'll be quiet now. Oh, he's a whale on the He's not a dwarf, but he stayed at a Holiday oh, Inn Express yeah. last night. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are gnomes. Actually, Actually, that's, that's a side job. job. He just kind of stands up in front of the house holding something with pointed shoes on. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move up. And I'm going to cast Crown of Madness on one T. Oh, guess it failed. Yep. You can act like you cast, cast it on me, and I'll throw some Alka Seltzer in my mouth and start foaming. Have yeah, Mr. Happy chase the Yon T at like a dash. Boogie, boogie, boogie. boogie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, number seven. Still targeting Helm. So let's do a longbow. I ain't rolling worth shit. Hey, we're not complaining not after last week. You were a rolling machine out. last week. <laughs> Crit the same person five times. <laughs> Are each of these squares five? Yes. Even the da even the diagonals in this game? Uh, it, just to make it easier, yes. Okay, I didn't know if you had them set that way or not. All right, I'm dropping my bow and pulling out my weapons and finishing my fat my last five here. And I am going to attack Yanti Malice in eighteen. Sorry, Sorry, looking at all my damage. damage. And then I'm attacking with my dagger. And I'm going to where it is. There it is. Okay, okay my, my sneak, sneak attack, attack should have turned off there, but it didn't. So just only four points of damage. I'll make I'll sure make it's sure physically it's turned off from now. I'm sorry. It's supposed to turn off after roll, roll, so. Okay. And my final move, excuse me, is I'm going to disengage with my cunning action. Okay, 19. Yeah, we'll just continue with the short bow, long bow. Okay. 
Damn. Yeah. And he's going to take a five foot step. And 16 just dashes off into the woods off the map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bug. No! <laughs> get him away! Get him away! <laughs> there. With a ten foot weapon, is this a flank DM? Yeah, it would be. Yeah, yeah it's an uh, advantage, isn't it, for uh, for a flank? Oh, so I have to click the advantage. Not, Not like, like you've been having, having a problem, problem hitting anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> yes. Okay. Moral is going to do another guiding boat. On number seven, and it goes wide. Eighteen ain't doing nothing, and Helm, you're up. Okay. Move up here. And I move my spirit weapon right there. And swing at number seven. Oh yeah, axe man. Okay, I'm changing my dice colors. <laughs> when, did, when did the Kool-Aid man join the battle? <laughs> um, let's see. I can go 60 if I dash, right? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll dash up there. So you're happy you'll happy old dash back, too, in that general area. Okay, and he drops his bow, grabs his scimitar, and swings, and it's a miss, and he swings again, and it's another miss. Dodging machine. Yeah, he's our tank. Yeah, that'd be hitting if I didn't have that shield of faith. I'm gonna run up uh, there. there. Attack with my short sword. <laughs> Miss. Attack with my dagger. dagger. Hit. Hit. That was the correct sneak attack damage, but yes, yeah, 2d6, alright. And then I disengage back. Okay. Uh, 19. Got that shield. 
Yep. Uh, let's try a scimitar. That's a miss. And that's a miss. And he's gonna take a five foot step. Should have done that beforehand. Okay, so I will now move here. Take a swing at number seven. Then you would get advantage. Sure. Oh, sure. okay, okay. Well, hold on, let me drop that. Okay. Correct, nice. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I don't like the flanking rule. No more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, do another attack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Moral's just gonna stay out of it. Okay, um... Move up a bit. And continue swinging at seven. touch guess not <laughs> happy's gonna just fly up towards them Bye bye spell. <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kellen moves up. And I attack with my short sword. Hit. Damage and I attack with my dagger. Damage and now I disengage. Run away, run away. When you have my, my AC, AC, you damn skip it. <laughs> <laughs> And let's see. And nineteen. He hasn't had much luck on Helm. So 
he's going to take a five foot step. And he's going to swing his scimitar at Malik. Attack of his opportunity. Uh, yes. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it. Okay, so let's see. Malik got hit. I have not applied damage yet. And we're going to try another attack at Malik. And it misses. Get right here. Try another attack. one's advantage, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Moral's just chilling out. Okay. Over here. My spiritual hammer right there. Don't swing. Hammer's coming at him that he knows what to do with. <laughs> Five foot step. If that provokes an opportunity, fine. And then I'm going to cast Arms of Hadar as level three. I'm gonna take Does the my... special weapon have hit points, sir? <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't believe, believe so. so. Yeah, yeah spiritual, spiritual weapon, weapon cannot be hurted. So, let's see... 1d6 is for the scout level. And he succeeded on his saving throw. Okay. Happy attacks. Happy's going to attack. Okay, and the snake man. That one's dead. <laughs> I'm going to move into the same square as Mr. Hap. You can put him in place close by. Yep. Thanks, sir. Dang it, I dropped the 19. 
<laughs> oh boy, how many dice? Ouch. Ouch. Just a little bit. And he attacked the visitor. And double, double fours, I miss. And I disengage. Okay, the Yun Tai is he's uh, uh Oh screw it. <coughs> um Yep, he's gonna swing his scimitar at Mr. Happy and hit Mr. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? He's gonna do it again. <laughs> Just to be spiteful. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> ooh, barely. And then he's gonna try and bite Mr. Happy. <laughs> oh. And in cometh Mr. Happy number oh, eight. Man. Oh, you're oh. kidding. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Mr. Happy lives on for another fight. Alright, well. I guess I'll just swing at the. Uh... All right. Yeah, let's see if I can kill this thing. <laughs> Are you mad enough to finish it off? If he was a dwarf, he'd be offended about that line. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fifth <Yeah. laughs> uh, Okay. Um you have defeated the uh Yintai uh, as the last one falls to the ground. Uh you are hearing no sounds of um, uh, you know Hemo or the other Yuntai that drag him off into the woods or the pure bloods uh, they all just seem to have disappeared but very faint you swear you can hear Hemo yelling out fuck you guys <laughs> I thought it'd be the sound of him being swallowed whole, swallowed whole <laughs> Uh, I thought he always wanted to be a yarn tea, didn't he? Like, <laughs> well, he oh, may well, be okay. now. <laughs> and guys, uh, a yarn tea, but he could be a mating ritual. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, uh, guys. If you don't care, can we take five here? Sounds good to me. Yes, please. Okay. All right. All right. We'll see you shortly.
so I'm kind of a uh, a softer spoken fella from my uh, mountain tribe. Um, we're kind of a smaller giant race of, you know, most most of them are usually pretty bigger, but I'm only seven foot uh, six. Um, I was a blacksmith in my in my clan, but uh, a few of us decided to go foraging and. I got separated from them, so I was trying to find my way back in a sense and kind of got lost and that's when I heard the uh, scream and decided to see if it was anyone from my group. Usually pretty level-headed, uh, you can see, uh, rushing around exactly wasn't exactly the best plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> Being as though I can't find my own group, um, maybe I can hang around with you guys for a while until I can get back. Well, an extremely dirty, dark-haired, as far as you can tell, elf steps up and you are just ultimately assaulted with some of the most foul odor you can possibly think of. And looks at you and says, stranger, come join us. Reluctantly holding my hand out to uh, to shake it, <laughs> uh, the elf looks at the, the, the hand and says, "Oh, how quaint!" and turns around and stalks away. All right. <laughs> I don't. I don't like. I don't like to bathe, and I don't trust people. So. Gotcha. <laughs> well, no harm, no foul. <laughs> No, there was no harm, but it was definitely foul. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, Malik, uh, you want to go and tell him what he sees with you? Okay, so I'm a tiefling with uh, red eyes and ram horns and a blotcher raptor hat. And let's see, I have a fork made from goblin faces. A little closet there. Um... I think I have a uh, <laughs> necktie made from our other fun. guides, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I have a closet. And um, let's see, um, not too much not else. else. I'll uh, ask I him to carry the closet for, for us. He needs a break because he's been uh, beaten up so bad. Let's so hand him the closet. I can do that. <laughs> Um, cause, uh, I can carry a, carry quite a bit, um, usually my job as part of my clan is to carry a lot of items back, so, um, just be careful, it's like seven, eight, and that closet's like a foot and a half tall, so you could probably squish it. <laughs> <laughs> be very delicate, uh, like I usually do with, uh, my work. Um, I don't have a shirt, but the, you can see a lot of burn marks from the smithy work that I do. Um, kind of see it as like a badge of honor kind of thing. Um, just have regular pants. I don't use an apron, so I just have a belt of tools on me. Um, like to, and some form of tattoos, but nothing. It's just more like just kind of practicing. I let people practice on my skin before trying it on others. <laughs> Zay, would you like to uh, describe your character? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a mid-sized humanoid, um, very cloaked in uh, dark, dark garments, ninja-like, ninja -ish. so to speak. But you can tell it's a uh, human, and that's underneath all the garments. Um, basically, basically, I'm yeah. a monk. Uh, went to one of the warlock. Little, little extra power, power in the dark arts. Uh, 
Okay, uh, Helm? I'm a pretty, pretty tall, tall ASMR, ASMR with bulky armor, and I'm just here to absorb damage. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, uh... I am a paladin of... Tempest, actually. <coughs> I'm a conquest paladin. And Moral is a dwarven cleric. With, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, with a warhammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Moral dropped out of her game, so just kind of playing him until he dies. <laughs> Which we really yeah. don't want to have because, you know, he's our only healer. <laughs> yeah, and I might need that. Uh, absolutely. And once again, uh, you all are standing in the middle of an abandoned campsite. Uh, there's torn backpacks and rotted gear littering the ground. Uh, you can see the remains of uh, three moldy tents. Okay, let's uh, search everything. Sounds good to me. Uh, okay, um, you do see a piece of dirty yellow cloth hanging from a, uh, crude wooden flagpole, and, uh, looking at it, you can tell that it was a banner, and... If anyone would like to uh, make a knowledge intelligence check. Tower out. Uh, this one, it doesn't matter. Um, you seem, Kellen, you seem to recall hearing something uh, when you first arrived in Cholt about uh, the company of the Yellow Banner. Very creative. And uh, it was a uh, party of explorers that, you know, arrived in Chult uh, many months ago. And when you were back in the port city, you know, you just overheard somebody talking about them and how they disappeared and no one had heard anything about them. All right, All right, so I turn to the party and say, seem to remember back when I was in Chult hearing about the party of the Yellow Banner. They were a group of explorers that yada, 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 yada. There we go. Yeah, okay. okay. Mr. Happy grabs the banner for his new cape. I was about to say, is he going to tie it around his neck? <laughs> okay. Um... And a cape would give disadvantage to a grapple check. <laughs> and as you're uh, looking around, um, you find a uh, in one of the uh, lining linings of the one of the tents. Uh, you find a piece of moldy parchment, and. Uh, it talks about, uh, this guy having the lead on the eye of Zoltek, and the old, uh, the old goat found an ob obelisk in the north that marks the entrance to the tomb of the nine gods. The eye must be in, but the door is magically locked. We think that the secret to opening it lies in the holy shrines. Uh, we're headed into the ruins to check them out. God willing, 
We'll be back tonight. Uh, Rosnisi serpent people are on the prowl, so be careful. If you get into trouble, uh, sound the war horn twice, and I'll come running. And for the yellow banner, you know, Lord Brighton. Do we see a horn? No, but that would have been what these, uh... <clears throat> cubes would be for, would it? Uh, no, you are not finding uh, a horn. Uh, truly, uh, about the only thing of any interest or value itself is the, uh, the letter. And you, who is saying they don't follow? I'm not sure what you're saying about the cubes. The cubes we've been finding in the shrine. They would open that locker to the tomb of the nine gods. So you think it has nine cube spots? I'm believing there are as many as there are shrines. But I mean, it was hinted within that letter that the they believe that the the way of opening the locked door is found in the shrines itself. <laughs> Boy, we're getting a lot of echoes. Yeah, somebody's got an open mic. And I'm hearing myself. Yeah, uh, you know, we are hearing you. <laughs> I guess uh, after we get a full rest and get all healed, uh, head to the next shrine. I would believe yeah. that would be a good thing to do. We're going to go back to our normal campsite. Sure. Show off the new cloak to our friend, right? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Orbix is um, very excited to see you, you know. Uh, he's feeling much better, and he's like, you know, guys, uh, I should be able to go adventuring with you tomorrow. I want to ask Orbix about the band of the Yellow Banner. See if he knows anything about them. Uh, n no, it doesn't ring a bell to me. All right, just a second. Yeah, uh, everything he was um, privy to was, you know, all centered around the Red Wizards of Thay. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, no, I think that was the way last. Know where the other shrines are? We only knew the two. Went to the east, west, where we. Well, we knew that we know the two. The two with the V. If, uh, you've got the the player map of Omu open. The two of the V we visited. But there's two more now that we're aware of. That doesn't mean there's not more. These are just the only four that the Red Wizards that they have been able to scout. Yeah, okay. That's a... And truly, um, you know, the... Um, someone told you the story of the Nine Gods. So, uh, following this letter, um, you know, you can safely assume that there are nine, at least nine separate shrines in Omo. And Orvix knew where, um, four of them were before, you know, the attack. That wiped out his party or, you know, separated him from his party and killed most of them. I'm still interested to find out how we're going to get the one on top of that gigantic pillar. Yeah. Oh, I'm a fault. Obviously. <laughs> All right, so I think we are going to take a full rest here. Um, I will take some guard duty. Uh, we'll keep an eye out, you know, just in case. And actually, since Orbix is feeling so well, he can take a, a guard duty as well. 
Ah, uh, yeah, he is more than happy to take guard duty. Uh, question is, do you want to trust him on guard by himself right now? Uh, Mr. Happy will uh, help him out. Yeah, Mr. Happy keep an eye on him. Okay. And you all managed to uh, have a restful night. Yay, Yay, we're healed. Huzzah. However, in the middle of breakfast, the dinosaur comes strolling in. <laughs> we'll throw Mr. Happy at it. Run away. Breakfast comes. Well, he's been eaten by at least one. <laughs> Actually, As... let's be honest. He's Mr. Half, not that big. He's probably just stuck in a tooth somewhere. <laughs> As they ran away, they looked back and they just saw, you know, the dinosaur throw Mr. Happy up in the air and munch and he was gone. <laughs> yes, but he served us for saving the party. He shall be remembered a hero. Yeah, I think there was like, what, like 10 hits? Like attempts that went at him? <laughs> yeah, Happy's been through the ringer. <laughs> Okay, so you do know the location of two more shrines. Of how to reach one of Yes, the next shrine is to the northeast. And I think that'll be the easiest one to get to unless we want to start lava walking and pillar climbing. No thanks. Unless maybe we find a bridge over there, but we won't know until we get over there, I'm sure. Okay, um... Okay, I guess we... For the second... to the... More than most... Okay, uh, as you, uh, walk over and make your way through the town, um... You come over and, you know, you're looking down at over the cliff at the lava and the waterfall and causing all the steam and so forth. And upstream, um, you see that a fallen tree has formed a bridge over the river ahead and you know, uh, its trunk is uh, wider than most men, and, you know, it stretches out uh, completely across the river. All right, what's the name of the dude that's with us? Uh, or Orvix. Let me throw him. Yeah, I tell Orvix, you know, look, looking at this bridge, I can tell by my keen perception that it is completely safe. So go ahead, go across. Uh, Orvix is looking at it, and he's like, well, what did you say your experience was again in this? I am a, a purveyor of items and a disabler of unsafe, uh, unsafe abilities or unsafe traps and things that will generally cause harm. Also a great engineer and bridge inspector. He's, he's like, okay, okay, I, I trust you, I trust you. And as he starts to climb on the tree, y y you know, he has gone two foot and he's already slipped off the tree and standing in the water at the edge of the bank. <laughs> well, like I said, the tree is completely safe. It did not fall in. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody noticed me just kind of whistling in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> 
And, and so anyway, uh, uh, he gets back up on it. Um, uh, it, it takes him a little while, but he does manage to um, make it across the, the river, across the tree. And he's dead in there saying, come on, guys, what are you waiting for? It's safe. Anybody have some sand? I'm just going to hop across that uh, bridge. Yeah, just cross it regularly. Yeah, we'll get going. I was going to drop some sand on it just in case, but I don't have any sand with me. Okay. And uh, you emerge on the other side, and once again, you have another one of these large roadways in front of you, and, you know, um, raised roads, and Horvix goes, you know, on the other side is the shrine that we're looking for. It's shrine time. Thanks. So we need yeah. to cross the road to get there. You no. chicken? I'm sorry? I was just <laughs> thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't come up with a good one for a shrine. And I got a new map coming at you here in a second. I figured you were setting the map up, that's why I didn't say anything. I shall spin dice instead. Neat trick to learn for downtime. Uh, don't do it too much because it can clog up the uh, the chat window. But if you hit and hold your Alt key and then literally throw your dice into the chat window, a uh, good chance your 20-sided dice will start spinning. I have one guy that did that all the time. And then we realized that his push to talk key <laughs> is alt. Yeah, so is yeah. mine. <laughs> yeah, same here. Okay. Um, let's share the map. Okay, uh, you see uh, swift carvings decorating two obelisks at the entrance of this compound. Uh, the courtyard is overgrown and it lies under the shade of these tall palm trees. Um, some doors, uh, stone doors, seal the entrance to a windowless shrine, and you see a smaller ruin standing nearby. Holy crap, we're a small army. Well, I guess we should check out the smaller ruins first before yeah. going in. Yeah. I, agree. I agree. I am going to stealth myself. If you guys don't mind, I'll scout real quick. And I am going to move my way up to here. And By the way, I'm did you manage to get a way to read the obelisks at the entrance? 
Y'all can study those while I'm looking at this. <laughs> I okay. Check the other lists. Um, yes, uh, while you're checking uh, the obelisk, uh, once again, you're seeing an inscription written in old Omuin. And Orvix is all excited and um, he's like, uh, yeah, guys, uh, this is Unk's shrine. And Unk urges us to contrast all options before asking, before acting. And that's what you're seeing yeah. on the obelisk. Uh, as you move around to uh, the smaller ruin, uh, you can see that the roof of this workshop has collapsed long ago. And there's a thick mass of plants growing from the rubble. Um, and through the moss, you can see there are hundreds of iron keys hanging from hooks on the wall. Some are bent and broken, while others are rusted re beyond repair. Uh, however, a lot of them look usable. And you're not finding any creepy crawlies inside. Okay. Uh, what happens if I detect magic? Uh, which way are you detecting magic? Detecting magic on all the keys to see if any are magical. Okay, uh, well, let's move you up there first, and, uh, no, you are not detecting any magic coming from any of the keys or anything else in that room. Um, what's the lighting like in that room? Uh, the roof collapsed, so yeah, it's pretty bright. <laughs> <laughs> bright is outside. Maybe Let's we should gather the all the keys. <laughs> well, if it's, I'm thinking about what's what's written up front about the contrast. A uh, contrast yeah. is to be strikingly different. So, I want to examine the keys to see if I can find any of them that are strikingly different from the others. Okay, uh, that's going to take you a little bit to do. Uh, say, as you are looking to the doors to the shrine, mm -hmm. um, you see that they are massive stone doors. And, you know, uh, you're not finding any sort of lock on them. But uh, it does look like uh, it's going to take uh, a couple of people in order to push the doors open. All right, Beef, but get to the doors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys, you need to muscle a little bit. The doors don't seem to be locked, so we can uh, most likely... I can help if you'd like. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> You're not going to knock first? Nah. What about listening at the door? Well, I'll step away from the door since uh, my strength, strength is not my forte. Okay, Moral's gonna move up. Uh, Orvix is coming up as well. Okay, uh, you're not hearing anything coming from the other side of the door. However, considering the thickness of this stone door, you're not surprised. And, Kellen, um, you're looking, um, 
you're not seeing any any particular key so far that just stands out and says, hey, this is what you're looking for. Well, maybe we can still find some clues about the keys inside. Yeah, let's grab all the keys. Okay. Um, hundreds of them? Yes. Is that what you want to do, or you want to check out the temple first? Because it's going to take you a while to pocket the, the keys, temple. not to mention that's yeah. going to affect your encumbrance. There's a lot of keys. A lot of iron keys. Leave Mr. Happy out here getting a bag of keys. Nah, he has to come in with us. Grab one of the keys and like on his neck, like a little necklace, like he's like a rapper or something. <laughs> I was thinking earlier, Mr. Happy needed a bow tie. <laughs> okay, uh, you managed to uh, push the um, the doors open. Uh, you know, it it does take uh, the combined effort of all of you all to push these massive doors open and you get your first glimpse into the shrine and you see the statue of a giant snail looming before you um, it in place of the antenna uh, you're seeing five pseudopods ending in rocky clubs and along the walls you can see six iron keys hanging in small niches uh, above the stone plinths uh, beyond each or behind the statue you can see a carved pedestal in a wide alcove that has a keyhole set into its base. So there are keys hanging from those pedestals, like the ones outside? Ah, uh, yes. More keys. Right. And to... you're not Maybe. seeing any no. clay gladiators or. <laughs> so it's a snail with clubs. Yes. <laughs> well, I guess we should have a rogue check it out, see if there's any traps in there. Rogue's on vacation. <laughs> I'll step in and uh, examine the pedestal or the snail god statue who I can only figure is Unk okay um Unks Okay, uh, it appears to be just a common statue. Let me examine the clubs these guys are carrying. I'll give you another check on that one. Uh, yeah, from everything that you can tell, this just seems to be a normal statue of this club tentacled snail. Maybe right. take a look at the keys? I will in a moment. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yep, good process, good process. Alright, we'll check out the pedestal up front. Looking for traps, of course. Okay, uh, you are, uh... <clears throat> You're not finding any traps. Um, you l looking at the base of the pedestal, um, as you can see the keyhole and so forth, and, you know, you, with your experience, um, you have a feeling that it might be trapped, but you can't see the trap mechanism. Well, going on previous experience, I'm quite sure it's trapped. Every shrine we've been in has had one, so... Okay, um, is there anything particular about the keyhole that I'm seeing? Uh, no, just that it looks like it would accept, uh, any one of the keys that you've encountered. Okay, I'm gonna go take a look at the keys on the wall. Okay, the rest of you are just gonna stand outside, or...? They're sunning. No, I'll come in. I'm gonna step in. I mean, you don't have to, I was just checking. It'd be nice if a gigantic eagle got up and started beating the mess out of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yes, uh, you see, um... In each one of these little niches are, um, a key hanging. And it appears to be a perfectly ordinary iron key. I'm going to check another niche and just compare notes between the two of them, see if the key looks the same, so forth, so on. Um, it, no, you can tell that it has a different key pattern. Can you do the same, like, compare? All right, might as well just gather all the six keys that are in here. Maybe we Turn should just... To each other. I wouldn't touch them just yet, because you don't know if pulling one of them is going to light the trap or not. I assume, since you were diamonding, I assume you Get them from the door. Uh, for, uh, for on the wall. Do the keys have any traps on them at all? Uh, no, you're not finding any keys on the traps themselves. Mr. Happy starts slowly reaching towards one of the keys on the right of the uh, lock. <laughs> okay, Mr. Happy is reaching in in his little closet beak mouth. Do they have beaks? <laughs> Is this a shapeshifter? Okay, uh, his mouth uh, forms into a beak, and he grabs one of those keys. And a, as he pulls it off, you know, the little iron peg that's keeping it in the uh, little wall niche, um, you become aware that right in front of the pedestal uh, the air is moving uh, it, you know you can feel a little bit of wind current and let's see What? <laughs> OK. 
Okay. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so, you have um, uh, these keys. Mr. Happy pulls it out of the wall and uh, no creatures appear. Nothing negative happens. Alright. Safe. I just pick one at a time and see what happens. Happy moves in front of the lock too. <laughs> I want to go to another sh another one of these uh, portholes here and look at that key. Uh, do I notice Mr. Happy going towards the lock with the key? Um. Well, you can uh, roll a perception check and. <laughs> All right. Give me a sec. And then I am unlocking tokens. <laughs> Thank you. And Snappy yes. starts muttering something like about it being my treasure. So <laughs> giggling. Uh, I seen, am, am I noticing a differential between this key and the other two that I had compared before? Uh, you're noticing that it indeed has a different key pattern than the other two. Okay. And, um, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Happy, what are you doing? He's just sort of like stroking his little claw-like hands on the lock surface, looking at his key and looking at the lock. Did I notice that with my <laughs> perception roll? Uh, yes, you did. <laughs> All right, so hell no. <laughs> so I walk up to Happy and grab the keys away from him. He only has one key, right? Yeah. He has two. One around his neck two. from outside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the one he's stroking and waving considerably. Oh, actually, I, I just have happy altogether. All right. I'm going to... Do you mind if I grab that key from you? Yeah. i give you the keys if I manage to get them off, Mr. Happy. All right. I... I'm going to attempt to use that key on the lock. <clears throat> Wait, that's what I was just trying to stop Mr. Happy. <laughs> yeah, but I'll I might say this, say contrast a lot before acting. Understood, Message. understood. We have six options for us. And if the key doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. Uh, well, would that be considered acting, though? Contrasting. Problem is the contrast. How do we contrast? Contrast is to be differential, to check for differences. Every single key in here is different. But honestly, in a personal manner, I don't believe any of these keys are the correct key. Which is why I want to check to see if this key works. Do we have um, any sure, information we don't have... about Onks? About the kind of god he was? Or Onk? Like, does uh, Orvex have any information? Give me just a second. Well, we had something that said the puzzle cubes are the key, but... <laughs> Alright, to contrast, we need to compare all these keys together. Yeah. But what is that going to show us? I don't know. The bases of the keys, the... Um, are they all the same size on a base? Uh, yes, all, uh, all the keys are the same size. All right, so they've got the same size base. Are they the same length? Uh, yes. Take the one that Mr. Happy has around his neck and compare it since it's like the ones outside. I've actually got a thought. If all the keys are of the base same size and have the same base, then the only difference in them is going to be the tumblers. Or the tumbler lots. Uh, teeth. 
Yeah, so if we stack the keys, we may be able to work out the... I don't know, maybe we can compare it to a key outside. Or at least see if there's something that comes out of it, because we've got to compare these keys. We would have to pull all of them off the... Well, the first two, the first one didn't seem to let off a trap. So you're, you're stacking them, and then you're going to make a shape of all the teeth, and then look for a key in the shack? that matches that shape? It's the only way I can think about contrasting. Okay, I mean, let's, we've got, let's do we've, that. We've got to compare all the keys in one way or another. Uh, do you know a better way to compare keys? Match them. Okay, go ahead and do that and see if we, there's anything that matches the shape then. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> you... You stack all the keys you've done. Um, you found that when stacked, they do form a unique key pattern. And after um, quite some time digging through the keys in the uh, other set of ruin, you do find a key that matches. Try that one. Might as well. And do we all want to be in here when it happens, or do we want Mr. Happy to do it and all of us just be outside? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should be fine. It's the worst that could happen. And I'm gonna reshare the uh, story entry for the Legend of the Nine Gods. And truly, all anyone knows about Unk is the last paragraph. Good job, Unk. You blinded him. You blinded the bad guy and saved Omu. You're a snell after my own heart. Besides, I'm sure we can run away from a snail. <laughs> All right. Um. Actually, let's try it this way. Everybody, step back. I am going to use my mage hand to unlock the pedestal. Yeah, makes sense. Or at least to use the key. Don't know if it'll work or not, but hey, only one way to find out. Or we could have Orvex turn the key. <laughs> the thought did cross my mind. Uh, yeah, he's not that dumb. <laughs> okay. Uh, you insert the key using your mage hand into the pedestal. Uh, you are able to give it a quarter turn clockwise and... Uh, a concealed hatch pops open and I'm sorry uh, it's just like the other one the pedestal starts uh, turning around on the spot and as it's corkscrewing uh, you see this ornate stone cube rising from the top of the pedestal. And this stone cube... The tentacled snail. Unk. And... Alright, I will move up and do a cursory check of the cube to make sure there's no trap underneath it. You know, last thing I need to do is pull another Indiana Jones. Have another Mr. Happy. Okay, yeah, and you're checking before you grab the cube? Yeah. Uh... Uh, no, you are not finding uh, any trap. 
All right, I am going to grab the cube. Everybody hold your breath. Okay, uh, you grab the cube and nothing happens. Right? We have if the cube, can, so let's get out. Not sure if what. you can visualize me grabbing the cube and just standing there not moving with my eyes going left and right waiting for something to shoot out at me. <laughs> <laughs> and Malik, uh, you become aware of movement outside the temple behind you. Whew, nothing bad there, but we're locked. We're good. <laughs> oh, looks like we have company. <laughs> And as you look out, as you're peeking around the door, um, you are seeing yeah, fuck it, I'm running with it. Uh, you're seeing three ghouls coming towards you. And it would be a great time for everyone to roll initiative. And for those that don't understand Elvish. Let's track it in. And <coughs> does it uh, does the, uh, the fantasy grounds automatically do? Like if you know a language, okay, how it does, if you know a language at the bottom of your uh, chat window, you can click the drop down and it pulls up the languages you know. Now, if somebody exactly. speaks in that language and you know it, you'll actually read a translation of what was written instead of just oh. seeing the ruin. Or uh, ruin, excuse me. Or, yeah, or squibbles or whatever. And that does come into play in some modules. Uh, you know, you'll find like draconic script, and if you actually read draconic, you'll understand what it says. Ooh, they're ghasts. Cool. Uh, Tell me something that smells worse Yes, than I do. officially they are ghast, and. Yeah, the gas picture is a cool picture because the only difference is it stink. Besides that, they look the same. Gas is a stinky ghoul. Kinda, yeah. I don't, I can't give you more detail because honestly, my character wouldn't know. But, uh, but yeah, they're a stinky ghoul. Okay, everybody's rolled initiative and uh. Yeah, Melik alerted you uh, also, you know that danger is inbound. Okay, that was what I was going to ask, is if I was aware or not. If not, then I was just going to move in, in my turn, so. Alright, I'm going to move here. Do I have sight on Gast 4? Uh, it'd be... I'm going to say no, just because of the size of the statue. Easy enough, easy enough. Alright, I will finish my move to here, and I am done. Alright. So... <laughs> uh, sorry, still have a bit of a cough. You're I'm right, going to walk... Oh, can you lock the... Um... Yeah, sure can. Fortress, please? They're locked. All right. So I'll uh, walk up a bit and target S number four, and I'll wail on him. Take my spear in one hand, slap him. That hits, and I'm gonna punch him as well. Not 
and that will be my turn. As a quick question, um, Zay and DM, could Zay not use his spear two-handed? I could. Just the uh, winter rule before. If I use it two, if I use it two-handed, I can't do the unarmed attacks. Okay, not a problem. Okay. I have been using it handed when I my bonus action from or something else that not that's not a key attack. It's it's a DM's call because in mine yeah, I yeah, allow yeah. it because they can use their feet, but you know it's yeah every DM's I, a little I different. Talk, yeah, yeah, I talk with Winter to clarify it just because of that. The, some rule one way, some rule the others. Okay, happy. He's gonna fly up and scare the ghoul directly in front of me. Nope. <laughs> okay, helm. Okay. Seal of Faith. It's going to try and bite Mr. Happy. It has to move up first though, right? <laughs> so I thought one was the one at the back. Oh. <laughs> Tell you what, let's do that. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, he's up there with Mr. Happy. And Moral is We're gonna try the sacred flame. And he succeeded the fuck. Okay, fifteen's gonna Float up, and he's gonna try and claw Helm. If you got two hands, you get two claw attacks, correct? <laughs> yes. Most of the other ones have had to multi-attack and 
These don't. Damn it. Okay, Ghast 4. He is going to come up. And he's going to try and claw Mr. Happy. And he hits Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy takes some damage. Mr. Happy fails his constitution saving throw. And as a result, Mr. Happy is paralyzed. Am I aghast? I thought that was ghouls. <laughs> gas and ghouls both are allies, but gas can do it through smell as well, I believe. I believe they have a fight like that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Unga Max. until I can adjust volume from everyone else talking. So um, when I am um, when I'm throwing the hand axe, is it going to hit someone on the team since I have to go through somebody else? Uh, no. Okay. Because I don't, unless I can hit him from here, but I don't <laughs> I don't know how that works with swinging a weapon through, again, the teammates. Uh, it, you would take a minus two since you are throwing through someone. Okay. Okay, so then I will throw a hand axe. At guess fifteen. Now you just thought you were. <laughs> Just moving up for a better view. DM, can I interject real quick? Yeah. Um, just wanted to give you a heads up. I've been working with Billy. Uh, for those that don't know, Billy is my son. Um, I added a couple of effects to him that are his. Uh, the immunity to disease is just a place marker more for you. Uh, just so you can remember he's immune to disease. Okay. But I also added his aura of protection as well. He didn't have that on. So now the aura protection should automatically kick off when he rolls a save. Okay. Just wanted to give you a heads up, that's it. All right. So can I grab Mr. Happy and then Misty step over to here? Um. Misty steps a bonus action. Yeah, I can't really, well. Shit. Uh, you would provoke at the very least. <laughs> By grabbing him? Uh, yeah, I'll let you grab him. Could try Mage Hand if that wouldn't work, but... <laughs> 
Okay, so let's see. That'd be my action, I guess, then after I moved Misty over there. <laughs> And before I go, one other thing. Um, his aura protection is a 10 foot radius as well. So if anybody has to roll a save within 10 feet of him, they get his charisma modifier, which is plus three. Okay. All right. Now, myself, I am going to cast. I'm not going to cast anything. I'm going to attack with my short bow. I'm attacking 15. Okay. And I am shooting. Oh, no. Sigh. All right. So. For an elf, I'm horrible with a bow. I can just wiggle past everyone. You should be able to move th through friendly spots, right? Yeah. Alright, so I'll uh, move on. And I'll, um. I'll target gas 50. My spear. One hand. And I'll stab him. Then I'll use Flurry of Bows. And I'll um, punch him once. And then I'll um, punch the other gas. A second. Uh... And then I'll walk back. Okay, Helm, uh, you are starting your turn within five feet of a ghast, so I need you to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Okay. And power or... Uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, and you got lucky and just made your constitution saving throw. <laughs> for that plus six. <laughs> <laughs> so you're good to go. I will. Swing, I guess. And I'm going to use a Divine Smite on that. Are these things... I figure these things are considered undead. Or fiend. Uh, yeah, they are undead. Okay. So I figured. I thought gas were living. Only if, it, only if you associate it with my ex-girlfriend. I don't think anything living can... Good lord, so. Well... <laughs> I thought they were like living creatures who ate corpses, so they weren't exactly undead, but they hung out with undead or something. Nah, I believe both ghouls and gas are undead. Yeah. So what would be the technical term for killing an undead? You're not really killing it because it is undead, and I mean technically it is dead. So. It's a re-kill. Re-kill. Re re-kill, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Okay. Guest number one is, uh... Oh, let's try the claw attack. On helm, and it just kind of missed, so he's going to... 
step in and try second claw attack at Ungra. And that's a miss as well. Finally. Uh, moral is... Does Moral have to save? Does he starting within 10 feet of a goal, or...? Uh, he yes, plus, he... He's also got a plus three to that save. He will, and that's constitution... I don't think the plus three is helping. Yeah, the uh, plus three didn't help on that one. <laughs> no, not at all. So, guess what? Moral. Paralyzed as well. You are. Let's see. Yeah, he's, make he's, sure. he's like minus one in constitution normally. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, stench is, um, you're poisoned until the start of your next turn. <coughs> and that doesn't prevent me from throwing a spell. Okay, he's going to try and turn the undead. Both of them failed. <laughs> oh, failure is good. I always forget. So four would move away. And turns just for one round, isn't it? A turn? No, it's uh, ten rounds. A minute. Or ten minutes, yeah, ah. so it's uh, sixty rounds. Sixty rounds. And then guest one is turned. 60 rounds. It's one minute, one minute. Okay. Yeah, it turns okay. 10 rounds. Yeah, it is 10 rounds. It's only one minute. Okay. About to say, that's a long time to be turned <laughs> 60 rounds. That's <laughs> just the one minute. <laughs> Constitution for 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Even in death, they stink to all get out. The last one's actually a fray, so it's... You did give yourself a plus three on that one, didn't you? I did not. And Whenever you are within ten feet of him, give yourself a plus three on saving throws. That's not already counted. And that would have done it. So you're good. Okay. So for the plus three then, like where would I... Bottom left that? where it says modifier. Gotcha. Okay. Got that for next time. I will hit him with my maul. got some range on it. I think it's a he. Yeah, uh, Orbix is just is staying in the back. Ah, right? uh, yes, Any unless you all want to chase. <laughs> I can catch it. Uh, as long as the cleric doesn't get close to it. And uh, Dan's trying to do is get away from the cleric, but you catch up to it and it's I... not going to run away anymore. Yeah, as long as you tap it, it should stop running. Well, until it sees the cleric, we're going to try to get away from him again. <laughs> okay, so the ghast is running. And you have defeated the other two. You said the gas is running. I thought you said the gas is running, and I'm like, what gas? Did we set up a trap or something? <laughs> and you have the puzzle cube from the shrine. Which right. leaves us without the follow except the shrine in the middle of the pillar in the middle of I'll pick up Mr. Happy and put him in my pack with the poop he left in there. <laughs> Play poop? Yeah, I got I got uh Play poop. poop in my butt. It's not actually no that one wouldn't have been actually I guess it could have been clay poop, yep. Clay poop, and I think he added on to it today. <laughs> he, he wouldn't have eaten clay because that was the last half he. Yeah, oh, that's he true. Got that's true. Yeah, he got melted. And whatever, whatever the happy before him ate shot out of him when the uh, when the big oh. stone golem fell on him. Oh yeah. So basically, the poison melted the outer layer of happy, and we were just left with the clay. Blob. Statuette is still there, so that's why it All was right. heavy enough to replace the guys. We are not really actually, we're not in bad shape at all. Nobody got hit, no. So, if we except want Mr. Happy, well, yeah, except Mr. Happy, but if we want to try, wait for everybody to poisons. get up. Oh, the poison's only for a round, so um, take a short rest, I guess, and head over to the other shrine. How do we get to the other shrine? Well, let's walk over there and see if we can find a way at least. Maybe there's an entrance from the building that goes down and up. Maybe there's a bridge going across. Hell, maybe Mr. Happy, can, maybe it's close enough for Mr. Happy can, you know, throw my rope or take, take my rope take over rope. so that we have a rope we can just climb across or somebody gaseous form or whatever. Yeah. All right. So the <laughs> plan is trying to get as close as possible to the pillar. Well, let's do a short rest first, and that way we can get up anybody that's poisoned and 
maybe his uh, paralyzation will worn out like then. If not, then we're probably going to have to tie the rope to his foot and try to throw him over the chasm. Okay, one okay, short rest. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That gives me and my spell back. <laughs> I say we make a move slightly to the southwest, more south-southwest, and take a look at the, the ridge line there behind the buildings to see if we can locate Basically any way to get over that shrine. Try to get as physically close as possible to... Uh, yes, uh, you know. know, you're standing at the at the edge of the cliff, and you're seeing this column of rock rising 200 feet above the lava, and you see this walled ruin overgrown with these palm trees perching on the summit, and at its narrowest point, the gulf between the shrine and the rest of the city is about 60 feet. Not that bad. Anybody else got a rope? I you do. Know, I love the All fact right, they made it tied. longer, 10 foot longer than the standard rope. <laughs> so we'll tie, your, <laughs> we'll tie your rope and my rope together, have Mr. Happy fly over and and tie it. Or we can, I don't know, would we be able to tie something with a couple of mage hands? Or we could just use the gaseous form, you know, but... Can you gaseous form everybody and then yourself? Um, no, it lasts just... for an hour, but it's a concentration spell. Well, so I'm just saying there's, level. <laughs> there's six of us. Do you have six castings of it? Well, I have two second. I assume I could use thirds for second level spells, right? Warlock only has maximum level spells. Box. All your spell slots are maximum level. Oh. So, no? <laughs> well then, we'll, so we can tie together ropes and see if Mr. Happy will fly it over and tie yeah. it off, or maybe double mage hand tie it off over on the other side. Yeah, he has little hands. Okay, we'll set him up with a little rope. So tied together, we got 100 feet of rope. And then once he ties it off, somebody, I'll hang back here, and... You could probably tie it to this end as well. We'll see if we can back. tie it to this end exactly, exactly. Okay, give me just a minute to see how this is going to play out. <laughs> well, I don't like it when see, he's laughing like you that. See, you see, I was going to hold the other and let y'all go across, and then I was going to swing over Indiana Jones style, but that's all right. Well, it, you oh, know, you to get back this side, man. <laughs> you're letting a closet yeah, tie the other end of the rope. <laughs> we're letting a summon demon tie the other end of the rope that we're going to try to cross successfully. Because <laughs> that's safe. And I can exactly think his mind, yeah, this is for this is for flipping Mr. Happy's one through six. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so Mr. Happy flies over and attaches the rope to something, and All right. you're semi-confident that it may hold. <laughs> the easiest way to test this is, I would say, a good old game of tug-of-war. Get our two or three strongest and have y'all pull to see if it lets go. I fig figure between the three of y'all, y'all can basically match out the, uh... Or if we really want to make safe, the rope is already... Or the rope is already on the other side, which is a problem with Gash's form, is... Can't take it. If someone travels in Gash's form to the other side, you can make sure that the rope is secure. I don't know, um, that sounds like metagaming to me. <laughs> well, basically, we're just using a rope to climb up some stairs or something, right? 
well. We're using it to climb across a 200 foot pit straight down on the lava. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then there, what? Uh, uh, the rope on this end. Uh, a, a climb check would be necessary, and then if you fail that, what, a reflex? Yeah, sounds about right. And then you gotta calculate damage for 30 feet down. Then hope you don't land on lava. I would say anybody that's got good athletics or good acrobatics, take the rope, and anyone else, dash this form it. So, Orvix goes first, then? For greed? No, <laughs> hell no. If, if both sides are tied, Kellen's going first. This is this is my type of metagame in here, baby. Okay, good luck. And Kellen hops off, and he's going to high-wire it across. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we're doing what now? Kellen's coming across on the uh, rope? Yes, I'm going to high-wire... Trapeze walk the rope. Since I'm an elf, I'm going to do it Legolas style. Okay. And yes, well. I just somehow compared myself to Legolas. Ah, damn. You guys. Shit. <laughs> 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 All right, Legolas. <laughs> what did I roll? <laughs> Uh, a natural 20. <laughs> oh, so I got 29 on that one. Yeah, I was doing cartwheels across that room. <laughs> I was really hoping for a one. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're up, we can tie it around our waist and you can kind of like pull us up, right? So um, I only weigh like 130 some odd pounds, and that barbarian alone's got to be weighing close to about 300. Maybe if I hug a tree. <laughs> but there's no way I'll be able to pull him up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try just uh, walking across the rope as well. Okay, throw him in the tower. Anyone climbing on the one? rope? Acrobatics? I have athletics. Uh, acrobatics, athletics. And say, you made it across the rope not as spectacularly but pretty damn close I'm a ninja Mr. Happy's holding up a yeah, little placard a with an 8 <laughs> and uh, yeah, you managed to make it across as well I'm just using gaseous form <laughs> um if I was Malik Fauci, I would wait until we know who can make it across and who's going to have trouble, just in case you have to cast it on somebody else. Mm, I'm just heading over. All right, no problem. <laughs> well, I think I think we're officially going to lose our cleric. Uh, let's see. Fine. <laughs> wait, disadvantage. I'm gonna reroll that. Why do you have disadvantage? Oh, he's poisoned. Poison. poison, yeah. That would be why. Just trying to picture a dwarf high wire walking and flipping plate mail. I'm so not yeah. used to rolling so actually, in the tower. Hold on, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's the other side of it, too. I think he would get disadvantaged because he's in heavy armor. I'm really not helping our case, am I? Uh, hey, I have no problem with letting the cleric fall. <laughs> My mom always said I talk too much. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta take that risk. And, you know, he managed to, you know, he starts to fall, but he does manage to reach up and grab a hold of the rope. It's an advantage you have when your arms are twice as long as your legs. <laughs> no kidding. And 
land. He uh, makes it across to uh, barely, you know, he's holding on for your dear life and just tugging the rope and slowly sliding over. And Orvix. This moral gets to this side, I turn to him and say, Oh, I'm gonna laugh you if you the one. Forgot your hammer on the other side. <laughs> Nice <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately, he made his uh, reflex, and uh, just like Moral, uh, you know, he got off to a bad start, but he manages to come over and finally get across the rope. Okay, who's that leave left? Um. Uh, I think that's everyone. No, Helm still needs to Helm. come across. Oh. Alvin's missing. Nice! nice. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All the way across the rope. He even looked more spectacular than I did because he did it in heavy armor. Okay, um... <laughs> uh, you see palm trees growing in front of the squat building, and you can see worn stairs um, ascending to an archway that forms an entrance. Um, reliefs of coiled serpents Flank the entrance. I want to read the obelisk. I'll get Arvex to do it. Okay, let me do some quick housekeeping here. Hmm, I know it said the stinks are not what they seem. Okay, uh, Kellen, uh, you're not seeing, um, the typical phrase on, um, the obelisk that you're used to seeing in front of the other temples. Uh, it appears that, you know, it is, um, by the entrance where you can actually see, uh, words carved into the stone. Roger that, roger that. All right, I'm going to go stealth. And I am going to scout ahead up towards the doors. Okay, uh, would you like to uh, make a perception check while you're moving up there? Yes, sir, I will. Okay, when you get about right there, um, you notice something in the trees. Just that little bit of movement caught your eye. And you are seeing these, uh, like 15 foot long snake creatures. Do they notice me? Uh, yes, they are aware of you. All right, I'm going to ease my way back since I'm not immediately rolling initiative. I e as I ease my way back, I'm gonna let everybody know that we've got long reptiles in the trees. And 
And as everyone is staring into the courtyard and actually looking for them, you can see four of them in the trees. How do Boy. we want to? How do we want to approach this, guys? Try talking to him. I don't speak snake. Sorry. Anyone else speaks? Sl no well, possible tongue there's... over here. They're not snakes, so. Um. I think to me. I don't have any type of skill that would let me figure out if I would <laughs> think they were intelligent or not. So. To me, they look bestial snake, -like, under which case I wouldn't immediately think that they could talk. In other words, I don't have nature. I do not either. How about this? I'll give an eye on a nature roll to see if I could... see if I've read of any type of creature like this, and if, uh, you know, I would know if it's intelligent or not. You know, you seem to remember hearing something about them. Um, it, you know, they were talking about um, oh, about these snakes uh, that are able to camouflage themselves. And um, from the discussion that you overheard, uh, no one said anything at all about their ability to speak. Alright, I'll relay that information from what I could remember from a passing conversation that came from my best friend's drinking brother's sister's cousin's nephew's uncle, who was actually a quite a good explorer. Snake connoisseur. Are they even aggressive? You could notice us. They didn't make. Do you want to see if we can like feed them, and then they'll like not bother us? We still have the troll, right? And the closet. Yeah, and a closet. <laughs> and a closet. <laughs> well, troll would be better to use for that. Yeah, maybe they'll leave us alone if. We have a dwarf. Well, we, we have... I think the troll will be good, though, right? You want to keep the troll? I'll be honest. How if I had to eat, I'd have. much rather eat dwarf meat than troll meat. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to throw him some troll meat? I'll throw one of them some troll meat. Okay. Uh, it, you, you throw some troll meat out. And it just totally ignores it. Or yeah, maybe we could just walk on by them then. Hey, Orvix. I want you to see if you can get to the door. <laughs> <laughs> Might still need him for our translation. Uh, you don't pay me enough to go first. <laughs> Wait, you don't pay me at all. <laughs> I'll help you out, but I ain't going first. <laughs> no, I'd ra rather Orvex stick around for the translation, so we either... I say we send Mr. Hack. ...waltz past the snakes, or we just... Yeah, I'm Oops, just gonna I have guess. Mr. Happy flap up and take a look. You want to put him there, or you want to put him there? Let's have him flap right up there, and he gives a little wave to the snakes as he flaps by. <laughs> really doesn't help himself. Though. Okay, as Mr. Happy is flying up, uh, you can see that snake number 15 
18. Uh, it's starting to coil up and it, it pretty much, um, uh, it's like a spring. Uh, it just kind of straightens itself out and you see it shooting into the air. And it's going towards Mr. Happy. Flap faster, Mr. Happy. And it tries to bite Mr. Happy. And unfortunately, it misses Mr. Happy. And Mr. Happy makes it up to the door. And now it's time to roll for initiative. Good initiative day. I'm joining you down there. <laughs> and let's see, Moral needs to roll initiative. And just for the sake of what we're looking at, I'm going to do one thing real quick. And happy set 14. This we just need Mr. Happy now. Okay. Um, number 14's going to stay in the tree, but ready in action. All right, number 15, I see you quite well. It's fireball time, baby. Actually, Alright, so I fire my fireball. Fire sure I have not targeted. Fire bolt. No way I have fireball yet. And I hit. And I graze him. <laughs> Okay, number five, staying in the tree and ready in an action. Say, you're up. Okay, so... Talk to... Uh, Winter, can you talk to tokens? Oh, yes, I sure did. Alright, so I walk up to the snake, one of the snakes, and I take my spear in one hand, and I miss. Pissed off, I flurry of blows and I try to punch a snake. Hit with one of my attacks for seven damage, and my second also hits. Five damage. And then I walk back. Bloody the snake. Okay, Mr. Uh, Happy fifteen <laughs> can see down the down the hall and he's going back to hit fifteen. He's trying to scare it. Flying up and scaring. Blah! Ooga, ooga, ooga. <laughs> I don't think he was scared. Uh, yes, you are correct. He's not scared of Mr. Happy. 
I'm with a name like Mr. Have, you just want to hug him. And do you want to stay back to scare, or did you want to move up and scare? Uh, I guess we'll have him sit back and scare. Okay. And number 20 is uh, coiling up into the spring and all of a sudden he launches himself out of the tree towards Mr. Happy and he's trying to bite no. Mr. Happy and he does indeed hit Happy and Well, I guess, uh, yeah, I guess that Yandi he was chewing on has now been forcefully released. <laughs> and Mr. Happy... <laughs> um, you take the normal snake damage, the normal bite damage, plus uh, from the spring attack, uh, it deals extra piercing damage as well. And Orbix, uh, Orbix is going to come down and jump in front of Moral. And he is going to fire a hand crossbow at number 15, and it misses. Moral's gonna take five foot step and we're gonna try to do a uh, sacred flame And he succeeds a saving throw. Uh, Chikuli 15 starts springing and he's gonna come and try and bite Orbix, which indeed does hit. And let's see, the spring attack. And he take another 2d6. And Helm, you've got snakes jumping everywhere. Awesome. Um, I will. Move right here. And I'm gonna go show the face on my Like he stole it. I will use my maul. Oh, 
yeah. Is it rather squishy? Yeah, that's what Ungar said when that head exploded. Just give me a second, cause it, uh, freezing up a little. <laughs> Wish I had him when we were fighting the frog Hemoth. <laughs> no kidding. There it goes. Alright, I'll chill touch a snake. Yeah, fourteen's just sitting up there with a readied action. Alright, Kellen is gonna move here. And he's gonna cast Frostbolt again. Or not Frostbolt, uh, uh, Firebolt. Oh, we missed. And you hit the temple wall. <laughs> it goes right off the wall. Yep, five's just gonna stay ready, say. Like all these ready to actions, but. Um. I'm gonna walk up to Akuli 20. Okay, uh, right. that's gonna set off the ready to action for Jakuli 5. Which is a spring attack. And... Ooh, you get lucky. Uh, the snake lands right beside of you. Considering it was a spring attack and the attack missed, should the snake just, like, fly past me and hit it? <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> uh, I'll put him behind you so he's got flanking. <laughs> well, he's already missed, so. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're good. All right, I'll go for the snake <coughs> right in front of me and try and stab him with the spear first, which doesn't really work. I'll uh, do flurry of blows and try and punch it. That hits. Uh, amount of damage, and I'm gonna punch the same snake again. Also hits. Very wounded, and then I'm just going to wiggle back here. Okay, Mr. Happy. Mr. Happy failed one. Uh oh. <laughs> What's happening? And. Uh, Jaculi number 20 ain't doing nothing. Jaculi number 20 disappeared. Yeah, he was dead. Um, yeah, Orbix is gonna... Yeah, 
he's going to come over here and try and shoot 14 with a hand crossbow, which does hit. Uh, Moral's gonna come in behind Orvix and we're gonna try another Sacred Flame. And did made a saving throw. Okay. Get up in here and do some that. No way. Okay. Go on the other side. And that would give you advantage for flanking. User disconnected from your channel. Huh. I think it was the litter meat sound thing. Now uh, we lost drag. User joined your channel. Welcome back. Good to be here. Damn, he killed my snake. <laughs> I keep having this thing pop up, this console, and it shows me, and it shows like a lot of 3DX create texture fail thing. Should I be like worried uh, about that? If that keeps popping up, um, the way to fix it is to, well, the way we fix it when it happens is you have to leave the game and then when you go to join the game, there's actually a little button at the top left that looks like a nuclear symbol. You click on that and that clears your cache and then you join back to the game. The problem that usually happens is, is that at the download of some of the module items failed getting over to you, so your cache got corrupted. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, that's a new one on no, me. I won't worry about it till after, I guess. Okay, yeah. Malik, last here. one's yours. One snake left. I'll move up. <laughs> and I guess I'll just chill touch it. around and I turned away and looked and I almost all of them were dead. Dad, no kidding. Oh, just a Excuse me, they all are dead. Uh, you know, they had an awesome attack, but really they're uh, very squishy. Uh, half a CR. <laughs> I'll just give uh, Mr. Happy CPR there. Get him uh, healed up. Somebody hit that pool with some negative energy. Damn it, I really wanted closet number eight today. Is that too much to ask? I'm gonna walk over and touch the closet and use. You really wanted the what? I really wanted closet number eight. <laughs> oh, ha ha ha. Emma, winter on closet a week is beautiful. Well, we'd be on closet 15 if that was the case. Is Mr. Happy level up? <laughs> well, not if he keeps dying. Okay. So you're gonna uh, give Mr. Happy some first aid and 
You have defeated the snakes. Oh yeah, I'm getting sick of troll. Can we like meat? <laughs> or it tastes like chicken. Yeah, snakes pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. And guys, this is a uh, really good spot to stop for this week. Excellent, oh, excellent. Cliffhangers. Yay. <laughs> and uh, uh, just so you have some time to consider it, uh, Ooh, can you at least give us the inscription that's on the wall? Uh, that's what I was getting ready to do. Uh, and also <laughs> our XP, please. Uh, that's I think he already did 1350. Ah, yes, he did. Yes, he did. Sorry. But death rewards a thief deceived. Truth comes from the serpent's mouth. Huh. Well, there's one thief in the party. <laughs> but, uh, gentlemen, uh, like I said, this is a good place to stop because. Yep. You'll have some time in solving the next puzzle. And thank you all for a good game. Same time next week. <laughs> um, sure. sure. Sounds good. And we appreciate it. All right. All right so just to clarify, because apparently you guys went in daylight savings a couple of weeks ahead of us. So now it's what? What time is what, it there? What, uh, uh, right now it is... It's two o'clock Eastern. Four hours difference. Yeah, did change. Oh, cause I the light savings time only changes for me. In... All right, I just need to. I'll be on time next one. Next time for that, since I know. Yeah, cool. Now that I know. All right, gentlemen, okay. have a great Thank week. You.